and welcome to Tensar Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy while having your coffee. Well, I don't need to tell you where we are. We're at the uh, iconic Sydney Harbour outside the Opera House. Uh, have a pan round, Brian, and look at the view just to show everybody where we are. One of the famous vistas of the world, Sydney Harbour. We're here in Sydney as we continue to roll out Tensar Interax uh, across the Asia Pacific region. But, so that's given us an excuse to come here to talk about uh, the Sydney Opera House, but not the Opera House itself so much, but more its construction. Although it's a fantastic building, well known all over the world, it uh, is actually used as a case study in poor project management in a construction project, believe it or not. I'll tell you a little bit about the, the history of it. Uh, if we go back to 1955, that's when the competition was launched uh, for architects to submit designs. And the winning uh, design was uh, announced in 1957. That went to a Danish architect, uh, Jorn Utsen, uh, who produced only a few sketches, uh, but that was enough to win the design. And construction started early as 1959, in spite of the fact that the design was not completely finished. Utsen urged the, uh, the client to delay construction until uh, the rest of the design was um, was uh, finished, particularly the structural design by Ovarup that wasn't particularly well developed, but no, uh, the, the government wanted to go ahead, uh, they wanted to get construction started early, they were worried about uh, not having the funding or public opinion uh, sort of uh, fading a bit on the project, so they, want, they went ahead anyway. But you can imagine the project management difficulties that created by starting construction before you even know what the rest of the building is going to look like. So it's very difficult to plan the budget and control the budget and plan your resources and materials and so on when you don't know what's coming around the corner. So that inevitably caused delays uh, when people kept being surprised. And, and worse than that, if you start the construction without knowing what it's going to look like on the roof, for example, uh, maybe what you start at the bottom with the columns, uh, as they did here, when they built the columns and then later they finalize what the roof was going to look like, the columns weren't big enough, they weren't strong enough, they had to demolish the columns and rebuild them uh, because they'd started before they knew what the rest of the structure was going to look like. Incidentally, while I think of the roof, it's one of the first examples of using computers in structural analysis because of the unusual shape of the roof. Other aspects complicated the, the construction, particularly with communication. The client insisted that the engineer, architect and contractors all communicated directly with the client, but not between them. But inevitably, that led to misunderstandings and delays uh, because of the poor coordination uh, between them. And to make matters worse, in uh, 1965, there was a change of government, and the new government was less sympathetic with the whole scheme. Uh, so they brought the management of the whole project uh, uh, to within the government. Uh, that caused some disagreements with the architect, Utsen, who actually quit the project in 1966 during construction. So then they needed to find new architects. And because the initial brief was quite poorly defined, there were major changes made to the interior. It started off with two theatres and then it became four theatres, so there were loads of changes uh, inside. And um, eventually, uh, it was opened in 1973 by the Queen, so that's 50 years ago. It's celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Uh, Unfortunately, Utsun, the architect, uh, wasn't even mentioned at the ceremony, wasn't present at the ceremony, which is a bit sad. But when it finished, due to those project management errors, it was 10 years late compared to the original schedule and a staggering 29 times over budget. But what's happened is you've got this, uh, this structure here that eventually uh, paid itself back and has become a, a, an internationally known icon for not just Sydney, but the, the whole of Australia. And later on, Utsun was uh, brought back as a consultant uh, architect in the design of the refurbishment, refurbishment works in 1999. But anyway, this, we've come here to talk about this because of its relationship with construction. And if you're working on a construction project and it, you're just not having a good day, everything appears to be going wrong, this should be your inspiration that in spite of all those problems, they ended up with a, a, a fabulous uh, structure that uh, has become a national symbol known all around the world and been there for generations to come. So that's all for this episode of Tensile Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.